casting a spell over someone. This is got the garlics that somebody used to clean themselves. They put the, some a belonging of the person that they want to cast a spell over. This is this is all. Most of it is black magic, though. Is it evil? Most of it is evil. All right. Now Melina has seen behind the scenes. Good morning. Ruin and pain. Okay. We're a mess. <laughs> <laughs> we are a mess. We are a mess. <laughs> it's, okay. The Wi-Fi just showed us up. It's like, the Wi-Fi. It's not you. It's the Wi-Fi. Yeah. I guess all of our listeners think that we're really um, professional and, you know, it's just like flawless. But Melina has seen that we are far from that. And it's You're a lot of, human. should we move? <laughs> <laughs> we're only human we're only human and she is we're sharing earbuds so that's really cute <laughs> yeah they're sharing earbuds like middle schoolers on a date it's adorable <laughs> takes me back it's very high tech over here mm -hmm. I just really like this song it makes me feel things ew <laughs> I made you this it made playlist. me think of you yeah. you want to listen with me together <laughs> don't talk <laughs> don't just know. listen to this one part yeah shh, shh, i love this part and then stare intently into each other's eyes <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying this as if like i had any like boyfriends in middle school i did not you did it <laughs> it was all my friends doing all of that yeah. yeah oh really i didn't either oh, yeah. look at us melina was over I'm here the only little hussy scouting around <laughs> <laughs> little Listen. Hussy. <laughs> I was seeking attention. Yeah. <laughs> My God. We should yeah. probably introduce ourselves. I was gonna say we should introduce ourselves. I'm Emily, your normal Rowan and Pine host. <laughs> I am boring old Nave. But we have a third voice. Oh, oh. I'm new and shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Melina, Emily's sister in law. Yeah. Yeah. She's our first guest. Yeah, and she's the one who's related to my special husband. <laughs> As opposed to the not special husbands that you have? <laughs> yeah, all the not special ones. I must meet them. <laughs> <laughs> you can meet my other sisters-in-law. Just kidding. No, I'm the only one. The only one. For there now. can only be one. For now. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> if only your brother was listening to this. Your other brother. There, oh. are, there are many brothers. Oh, it's true. I was like, which brother? Mario. Yeah. The, man, the other man. The other man. Neve has only brothers as well. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. It's two, yeah. <laughs> it's, How many? It's rough. I just have two, two older brothers oh. um, who hate each other and speak to each other through me. So, yeah. <gasps> oh, my God. That's fun. That's not fun. <laughs> my brothers won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but does that mean that they're like gang up on you though oh well as a child yes yeah i have three older brothers and then one younger one there's like a huge age gap yeah. between us and the younger one so he wasn't really there for all like the ganging up on yeah oh. but i distinctly remember being locked out of the house one time when i really had to go to the bathroom mm. and they thought it was really funny to terrorize me into like not being able to go into the house <laughs> oh, no. where i like climbed up like a lattice thing to go into like their window it was crazy but yeah they were <laughs> awful they suck yeah brothers do <laughs> suck if they're listening if they're listening you suck no they're fine now they were like what like 10 but you guys are both like little sisters of older brothers mm -hmm. yeah trauma trauma bond yeah trauma bond. <laughs> is this our trauma bond <laughs> would you like to tv with me <laughs> <laughs> permission to be safe in your car yeah <laughs> what your car is it's, this a tiktok thing no it's actually from i say to you and sometimes it's um it's a timothy chalamet quote from uh, you know is it was it don't look up that movie where like everybody's denying climate change and timothy <gasps> chalamet yes. is in he's like this like ultimate like gen z like you know he's got like the earring and, and all that and he's like uh permission to be safe in your car because he wants to be vulnerable <laughs> i forgot about that yes i knew i re remembered it yeah that one was so unhinged <laughs> 
Uh, it's just so random. Well, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. So you can say that to people. Permission to be safe don't. in your car. <laughs> yeah. I'll say it every time because my husband loves to step on the gas and brake really hard. And I'm just like, hello. I'm over here like a bobblehead. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, our episode today is about Mexican witches. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Sixth witchcraft mm-hmm. episode. And probably going to be the it's best. The sixth one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> mm. We've <laughs> that's a lot of pressure for someone who's new to this game. <laughs> Let's just say it's going to be mediocre at best. <laughs> a solid five. A solid five <laughs> out of ten. <laughs> pressure. All right. Oh, am I starting? You are starting. Oh. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. Do you want me to ask okay, you a question well, before you start? Just a like a fun little icebreaker question. Sure. Do you have a favorite fictional witch from when you were growing up? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't even. No, I really liked the lady from Bewitched. So what's her name? From Bewitched. Oh my god! Yeah. What's her name? Oh my god. See, is is Genie a witch? I love Genie. Witch. It's like that, I that like that like old school. No, nah, she's not a witch. But I was um for some reason a lot of like Mexican Mexican households watch like really old uh, American TV shows. So yeah. I was really very much raised on like Little Rascals and I Dream of Genie and Bewitched. Mm-hmm. And so watched a lot of that and so i just i just remember i don't remember her freaking name samantha but I, samantha, samantha. she did the nose samantha. wiggle i could never do yes. the nose wiggle and i loved her grand her her grandma she's so fab or her mother it was her mother who had like the like, afghan oh yeah. yeah she was like a 70s goddess oh my god an icon uh, goddess <laughs> Oh, wow. Yes. So, yeah, I would think that that's my fave. She's not Mexican, but I say honorary because a lot of Mexicans watched her. <laughs> you can claim her. That's fine. I claim her. It's yeah. like me. The queen. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there are Mexican witch idols out there. I don't know about because I was raised on American TV. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I can share a little bit about my background. Yeah. So I'm actually a Mexican-American. I am, I am um, genetically allowed to talk about this. No. <laughs> you checked, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. You checked and, with um, every Mexican so in America. I checked with every Mexican, and they said yes, yes. That's good to know. Too. They said, "Go forth, Melina." You are the spokesperson. <laughs> Everything you say is going to be held above your head. Held over? Was it over your head? Over your head, yeah. Over. See, I don't know anything. Uh, <laughs> Um, so my family actually comes from a really small town in central Mexico, and the state is called Zacatecas. So I mention this because I was raised very Catholic, and so the talk of brujas was always such a very yeah, you know, I know <laughs> the Irish are the Mexicans of Europe. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that. <laughs> um, So, of course, like, witchcraft and talk of that was very much, like, condemned and seen as, like, sinful. And it's very much rooted in the history of witchcraft in Mexico, which we'll delve into a little bit. Um, But, yeah, like, I bring this up to say, like, I do have, like, firsthand experience with, you know, witchcraft just being condemned, period. But, But it's kind of interesting because growing up I did see, like, little practices of witchcraft in our in our own family and i was kind of like hmm side eye i'm like um isn't this supposed to be sinful but (laughs) yeah yeah, i'll i can delve into that a little later yeah but it's like (coughs) similar with both of you because it's like your mom believes in kind of like folk magic stuff yeah and i feel like your family especially the ones in mexico believe in like folk magic how ironic yeah but but it's like i don't think they would call it that no yeah they'll just like it's it's different like, I remember, like, standing next to my mom at mass and the priest would literally be mentioning stuff that you're not supposed to be doing, like, as a Catholic. And it would be like, and you know, going to fortune tellers. And I knew that my mom had been to a fortune teller within the last <laughs> month. And she was just, like, <laughs> eyes straight ahead. I'm like, oh, the lady who says the rosary every night shouldn't be going to the fortune teller. Mm, fun. <laughs> How ironic. Yeah. How funny. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. Brujeria was sinful. And what is... 
brujería, you ask? <laughs> <laughs> tell us. <laughs> tell us. <laughs> Let me tell you. It's the Spanish word for witchcraft. And so let's talk about the history of witchcraft. Let's do it. So, um, well, brujería. We're going to call it brujería. Okay. Go for it. So I like the way you say it. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> and so, like in the in, in the fifteen hundreds, Inquisition was underway in colonial Mexico, and there was like a very much like a caste system was in place and followed very rigorously. Where like the white Europeans were on top, and then it was the mestizos were like the second to last, and the very bottom of that was the indigenous and Africans. Their goal was a decent society. And what is a decent society? The patriarchy and Catholicism, mm. which is very much hand in hand, right? <laughs> My favorite things. <laughs> right? <laughs> and it was like how they kept the checks and balances. Did it align with their patriarchal and Catholic pillars of society? So that's like kind of where witches like and brujas came in. So brujas are witches. Brujería was very much condemned. It was seen as the devil's practice, and it was rooted in colonial society's dedication to creating that decent society through this caste system. And there's an example. In, like, the 1500s, the Mexican Inquisition formally accused an Aztec shaman named Martín Ocelotl, of having committed acts of sorcery and divination, transformed himself into a tiger, lion, and dog, and he evangelized the indigenous peoples of the colonies in ways opposite to those of the Christian faith, conversed with the devil, and of having done and said many other things that not only went against the Holy Catholic faith, but also greatly harmed and impeded the conversion of indigenous peoples. And this is like... What a douchebag. <laughs> anger reading that. Because it's basically saying, like, he was encouraging them to, like, practice their indigenous rituals. Mm -hmm. And just not conforming and allowing the conversion to Catholicism, which was the whole goal of the Inquisition, was to have everybody be in one little tiny bow Catholic mm -hmm. and follow the decent society makes me mad. And like um, <laughs> personally, if it was between the Catholics who, okay, Christ changed himself into like he changed water and wine. Okay. Very exciting. Or the dude that can become a tiger. Substantiation. Oh yeah. I mean, which He's one are you cool. going to go for? Like, yeah, I'm with the tiger guy. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> that's way more exciting. Okay, They're yeah, like, wine nice. This guy's, <laughs> this guy's yeah. cool. Yeah. I'll follow wow. him. I love this tiger thing. I love this tiger. <laughs> Original Tiger <Gar>. King. <laughs> oh tiger my King. goodness. <laughs> Man, free Joe. Um, <laughs> is his name Joe? Yeah. Are Joe you? Exotic? Yeah. <laughs> Sticky Joe Dirt. I don't know <laughs> why. Dirt. I just changed the, the same Joe haircut. Dirt. They're the same. <laughs> Yeah. Oh Same kind of vibe. <laughs> mm hmm Anywho. An accusation that was made against Ocelotl, the Aztec shaman, was actually made by a Spanish woman named Catalina Lopez. So the record says that she encountered Ocelotl as she was attempting to visit Don Pablo Xochiquencin. And this Don Pablo was an indigenous nobleman who was appointed to rule Mexico City after the death of Moctezuma. And she claimed that when Don Pablo was ill, she and local nuns would visit him for comfort and to pray for his health. But one day she wasn't allowed in. And the indigenous members of Don Pablo's household told her that it was because Ocelotl was within the house and he was attempting to heal Don Pablo himself and he had forbade them from going in. Mm. The <laughs> remedies that Lopez and the women were using, the nuns were, oh, were of Spanish origin and he actually claimed that he was claimed to have said that rather than healing Don Pablo these practices were killing him. She finished her accusation by saying that indigenous servants told her that Ocelotl was performing brujería for Don Pablo 
and also that he was Ocelotl was famous among the Mexica for having come back to life after Moctezuma had cut him into pieces. Whoa. So it's like in the eyes of the Spanish Spanish colonizers, what other proof did they need to find that he was guilty and wasn't upholding decent society? He was coming back to life after being cut up. He was um denying these good Catholic people access to someone to heal them in their ways. Mm-hmm. So this is that was like, okay, bad man. <laughs> <laughs> Bad man. Bad man. <laughs> all they needed was like one person to say all this. Like they just needed like this one lady to just make the accusations because then I'm like, okay, right. yeah, right. we've been waiting for this, you know, because he is a threat. Right. Well, this was like one of the one of the most noteworthy accusations. There was a bunch more because I'm, I'm like, where did he turn into a tiger? Like, when yeah. did he turn into a tiger? <laughs> I want to know. But they don't include that. There's just it's all hearsay. Mm-hmm, when did he become the tiger? King? When did he become a tiger? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what are the proof did they need to find that he was guilty and wasn't upholding a decent society? An indigenous man, low on the caste system, denied a European woman who is higher on the caste system than he is, access to Don Pablo to heal him through the power of prayer. Thus, whatever he was doing in there was far inferior to what they would offer and therefore was of the devil. They didn't like that he had the power of shutting them out. It was blatant resistant towards those who were above them in the caste system. And how is a decent society going to operate if those below them are still practicing their rituals and not converting mm-hmm. and following the rules of a decent society? <laughs> like, yeah. that's like the, the theme is that they wanted to create the society where they were all homogeneous. They were all the same uh, religion, and everything would be hunky dory, easy yeah. peasy, because there would be no <laughs> resistance, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> this works out perfectly. It's fine. It's fine. So women were often accused before the Inquisition of using sex and love magic. Here we go again. It's always the women, right? always the women on their men, and many even admitted to it. Because they had, like, interiorized Christian discourses that really vilified brujeria and the subversion of male authority. There was actually an instance where this woman, well, this this Spanish male cut off ties with his indigenous lover. And he then, coincidentally, started not being able to perform sexually. Oh. And so, of course, it had to do with her. It had to do with, oh, she must have done an hechiza on me and hechiza is sorcery so they immediately assumed that it was her fault it didn't have anything to do with the guy who was probably you know going around and getting stis Mm -hmm. you know or like drinking a bunch for the fact that he left his lady or yeah Mm -hmm. it could be psychological that he couldn't perform right yeah yeah he was like oh man i loved her so much aside from like obviously she is getting accused of witchcraft and all of that like a little part of you, if an ex came to you and was just like, I can't perform anymore, you would take credit for that. <laughs> you would be like, Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't have dumped me then. You're thinking of me, huh? No. <laughs> I'm living rent free in your head. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> These cases were very common, like where it was like women were being accused of having power over men's um, ability to perform by brujeria. It was believed that these unnatural maladies were the consequence of hatred, jealousy, or unrequited love, which are all effects that could drive people to use magic. So there were, like, associations between magic, like love and sex, and they were also a consequence of Mexico's colonial landscape, like, sexual landscape, where men were actually allowed to have all these sexual liaisons, and... They were legitimate, like they weren't like even frowned upon. But then women, if if they did that, bunch of hoes, mm-hmm. basically. They're already really low in the caste system to begin with, like women in general. The caste system is very complex, but <laughs> but it they were how how dare you do that? Only men can do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and if you didn't adhere to that, you were seen as something other. Um, it's kind of crazy how that's hung on still for like. Hundreds of years. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Doesn't Christina Aguilera have a song exactly about that? Wait, which song is it? <sighs> What's the one where like the can't oh, hold us down? Genie in a bio. Nope. <laughs> yeah, can't hold us yeah. down. 
Is that what isn't Lil Kim on that yes. one? And she has like that whole yeah. verse about like that like it's like the beginning of the song. She's like, "What am I not supposed to have an opinion?" Yeah. <laughs> oh, Emily, Emily knows oh. all the words. It sounds like, can't, be, can't be allowed to speak because I'm a woman. I'm gonna say I'm too young. They <laughs> <laughs> also can't afford the rights to that song, so I should probably shut Don't up. Don't sing <laughs> it. Really, because that was exactly <laughs> like Christina Aguilera. Like I thought it was her when you were reciting the lyrics. Right. Yeah. You, you were like, "Oh God, when did Christina enter the yeah. room?" Yeah. Christina is like you. <laughs> Xtina, <laughs> Xtina, dirty, yeah, dirty. <laughs> so yeah, it was still going on yeah. in like the two thousands, and still is going on now. Yeah, it's not double standards quite the same as it was back then. Yeah, I mean they're not exactly burning us, but not exactly <laughs> socially burning us, like blatantly burning, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> like straight up burning because it's a crime. <laughs> <laughs> they're burning us on TikTok <laughs> on the tiki taki revenge porn. Oh. That's not good. <laughs> not good. No not bueno, good. as you might say for this episode. <laughs> no bueno. Um, <laughs> I was about no good. to I was say that too. You don't watch. You don't watch Ninety Day Fiance, do you? No. I know. I no? know. Emily's okay. a big fan. Yeah, we're both big fans. Yeah. Well, well, there. Yeah, there's like this guy who says like pasta is no good, and it's funny because this girl was like seeing her fiance for the first time in America. She put rose petals down in the airport. And then like the, the janitor custodian, came. yeah, <laughs> custodian came and started sweeping it no. up immediately, <laughs> and then he was like, "Boss says no good." Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? This is mine. He's, like, He's just like, boss says no good. <laughs> I, co- coincidentally, it's Tanya who's, and she was trying to become a witch. Oh, yeah. All, it all ties in. Yeah, because she was trying to be a witch, too. Oh, yeah, cool. she actually went to Costa Rica to learn curanderia, I think, which is uh, yeah. healing. Yeah. Healing magic. Yes. It all ties in to witches. <laughs> it all comes back to witches. It all comes back. I wanted to give like an example of this isn't written down, but it's like of how women were very much like seen as like vengeful people who could do brujeria and like this is like like who could do like um malicious brujeria and it was like targeted towards causing harm, of course. And there's actually like we have little pueblos in Mexico, and they have like these very conservative beliefs. So that's um, like villages, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. Pueblos are um like villages. Okay. I have to get Neve to sometimes translate Irish slang into mm-hmm. whatever it means. <laughs> what are you saying to me? <laughs> <laughs> like when you say H. Yeah. H. The letter H. There's actually one town, one uh, one municipality called Aculco in Mexico. It's in a municipality in, like, the Atlacomulco region of the state of Mexico, and it's said to be really cold. One legend of this place is called La Bruja. It's about this woman who was very beautiful, golden skin. She was the girl. The girl. She was that girl? Everybody wanted to be with her. Wow. She was that girl. She was the Kim Kardashian. She was Kim K. Ka- oh, Kim Kardashian. Kim Ka- Doesn't everybody want to look like her, though? Oh, no, but I can't get it. But not everybody wants. No, but does everybody want to be with Kim K? Maybe, right? I feel like a lot of people a do. Lot of, well, a she's lot like, of yeah, she's like the ideal. beauty standard, I guess, right? Like the ideal. You're right. You're Because right. right. everybody's like getting her face now. Pretty much. Oh, you're right. Mm-hmm. Her or Margot Robbie. Anyways. Either one. Yes. Including her sister. She's character. She was the Kim K Margot Robbie of her day. Everybody <laughs> wanted to be be with her was the biggest point like all the young men wanted to be with her but the elders of of the town were like no you cannot her family practices black magic so even though she was super beautiful nobody even wanted to marry her because the elders were told her told them no it sucks because it said that one of her biggest dreams was to be a mom and like oh. she couldn't accomplish this like because she couldn't get married. Everybody's so, chasing her lovers away. Yeah, literally. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Like, shoo, shoo, shoo. Get away. Bad girl. You won't actually like her. Black magic. <laughs> no good. So she was like still alone for years and eventually she became like too old to even like accomplish this dream of becoming a mother and so she grew resentful and she was out for vengeance and made a deal with the devil. Dear the devil. <laughs> El Diablo. 
after like this went on where she supposedly made a deal with the devil she uh, a child went missing in Aculco and then more children until I think it was like three children that were missing and they the townspeople immediately were like it's this girl it's the bruja it's her fault because you know she's mad at us so they went to her house like ready to do a Frankenstein on her and like wow you know get rid of her they're about to knock on her door and then cold and fog reeled in to the uh where they were and surrounded them and there was a tree right next to her house and it started speaking like in a really loud terrible oh my God. terrifying voice this is so cinematic i love this <laughs> yeah i do same i know like i'm like how do they get these stories who tell who was the first person to tell this story in aculco this is very intriguing um but the voice was saying like really awful things to them th- claiming that she was the one speaking through the tree it was the woman who they like shunned for or like kept from achieving her dream um and that she took the children as revenge so a guy this dude in the crowd had an axe and he like ran towards the tree to like cut it down but then the cries of the children were heard and the bruja the witch was saying that the soul of these children was actually trapped in the tree and so the mom of the children was like please don't cut this tree down my kids are in there it's said to like this day that tree is still standing and that if you stab the tree with the knife, the tree will bleed mm-hmm. and the crying of children can be heard. Oh my god. Along with the laughing of the bruja <gasps> slash witch. Ooh. Yeah. Spooky. But that's like an example of like them really saying that women are vengeful. Like that uh this was very much brought on by like the lack of her being able to to have like a sexual relationship or even love Mm -hmm. and this was her vengeance based on that specific kind of like topic where it's like she wasn't allowed to have romance or she was very much um how is it that men were allowed to determine her her dream was being able to be accomplished of course like she needs like back in the day she needed a a man to like Mm -hmm. become a mother but they yeah. didn't have IVF back then. They didn't have IVF. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but like that's like an example of them like really describing women as vengeful mm-hmm. based on the fact that they kept things so human as like sex from them or even yeah. the ability to have love. Mm-hmm. And so this was a way where it was like, oh, revenge. I'm going to take your kids. Yeah. Well, this uh, is what this is what we've seen in like every single witchcraft thing we've done is like you're punished for being like a woman and being young and beautiful you're punished for being single beyond a certain age you're punished for not being able to have kids it's like women could never win no. or even like your family's reputation where yeah. for her it was the elders were like no because her family practices something that we don't believe right. in which this poor lady but yeah that's just one example of um the Stories in Mexico that are, that are told to this day, I guess, in Aculco. Um, but yeah. Brujas were actually pretty, um, not highly revered in the caste system, but they were kind of like, they didn't belong anywhere in the caste system. They were very, like, fluid. Like, they could go anywhere because people feared them. Mm-hmm. And they kind of, I don't, I want to say they revered them, but it was very much fear and they ag- acknowledged that sort of like respect yeah like they're very much like they're the only ones who can do this certain thing that sometimes we need access to right Mm -hmm. i suppose like they would be useful so like you can't just dismiss them because you might need them one day you know right well it was interesting because even christian women who converted they're called lay women like in this article i was reading they even still employ brujas sometimes to do hechizas which hechiza like i said is like sorcery spells Mm -hmm. to do like spells such as um making your husband attracted to you like things like that like things of nature of like love and Mm -hmm. uh, and such um but it was interesting because there are many accounts of when 
these women would employ brujas to do, you know, the sorcery work, but then they would snitch on themselves to the holy office because the Inquisition <laughs> through guilt, because of their guilt. <laughs> and then they would confess and then the holy office was like, oh, just say a couple prayers. You're okay. Like, mm. <laughs> like it was, it was very interesting. Like that they were, it was kind of like, oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, never mind. I'm going to tell on myself. It was very <laughs> much like, it's such an internalized thing. Yeah. yeah. So it was very much like. And they find a little Catholic guilt. <laughs> yeah. Literally. They were like, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission, right? So. Right. But no, it was like, they, they would like not even go through with like the brujería. Like they would tell the brujas, never mind. I'm sorry. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to have this on my conscience. <laughs> just, just kidding. Just kidding. Kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, but um, they were – it's said to that they had a liminal existence, which is kind of like that thought of – that idea of, like, they're fluid. They can go anywhere. Um, because they knew how to use the powers that were inherent to both non-white and feminine natures, the brujas generated respect and even fear throughout colonial society because they had, like, the mastery of both, like, body and supernatural forces and they were able to subvert the masculine control of women which formed like the integral part like of the power relations of colonial rule so like men men were powerful Mm -hmm. but brujas were able to take them down a notch right and that's why they were so revered and respected because they said, sit down, son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. And they they, they didn't conform to, like, the caste system. Like, they were just like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. You can't hold me down. Uh, like, yeah. Um, and it makes me feel like, like, how are you talking about the people that would, like, feel guilty about doing it? Mm-hmm. It almost seems like there's, there's sort of, like, two things going on. It's like, but it's like before the Europeans came, it was like, this was kind of like their core beliefs. And then... When they came and were, like, conquering, they were kind of, like, they still held those beliefs, like, deep within them. Mm-hmm. But then also held the, like, the fear of, like, the people who, like, conquered them and did awful things to them. Right. Well, yeah, like, that's why during the Inquisition, like, yeah, people were encouraged to, like, convert. And it came to the point where they were, like, the Spanish were de- just so desperate to ke- get in that control that they just started killing off, like, the religious leaders, like, the spiritual leaders to right. be like, okay, you have nowhere else to go. This is what's going to happen to you if you keep practicing your beliefs. So people would be like, okay, I'm Christian now, but they would still be practicing mm-hmm. their their beliefs, like, right. in the shadows, basically. Yeah, because, like, you can't really um, – it's very hard to get rid of somebody's faith, Right. Like, you can't make right. somebody believe something. You can tell them to, but, like, to believe something is almost like an... Like, you have no control over what you believe. You know what I mean? You can convince yourself of things, right. but, like... Yeah, it's just something that's, like, just exists inside of you. internalized. Yeah. Yeah, it's internal. It's very internal, and it's... It's kind of like when you're, like, scolding, like, a child or something, where it's like, yeah, you can make them feel shame for a second, but, like, ultimately, if they don't want to change, like, they're not going to change. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Like I don't want to equate them to children, but I do, it's, like, kind of an like example of, like, where it's, like, you can't use fear-based authority. There you go. Fear-based mm-hmm. authority to, like, change people. Right. Um. So, and that's what they were trying to do. Right. And it was, like, they succeeded, but... But not, not fully. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's where witches were like, no. Yeah. We, you did not, sir. They were like, you can't take this away from <laughs> you us. You can't take this away. I got my spell. And that's what I think, like, even saying this now, I think that's really interesting about how, like, we were talking about your family. It's, like, very Catholic. But at the same time, they would do the thing with the branch. Yeah, that's what I was going to talk about. Yeah. But yeah, where it was very much, like, my family's super duper Catholic. Like, they, I, small town in Mexico where everybody and their mama was either Catholic or Protestant, which is, like, the very tiniest amount of the population, but the majority of people were Catholic. But my tia, my aunt, whenever we would leave Mexico, because we would go every year, and whenever we would leave, she would actually sweep us with a a branch of a tree that's that we have in Mexico. And one year... Recently, I think it was only a couple years ago. I was like, isn't this witchcraft? Like, (laughs) I asked my dad, I was like, bah, isn't this witchcraft? He was like, no, it's not. It's just the cleaning. And I'm like, (laughs) 
<laughs> cleaning witchcraft. Like yeah. this is not of the Lord. Like yeah. <laughs> Like where did we get? Did you bless this branch? Like where? Where is the? Where is the religious aspect yeah. of this? And also like like some things in like common in Latin America, not just Mexico, is the uh, it's called a, a limpia with a huevo, which is a cleansing with an egg, and it's where if you're feeling like bad, like you just have like a bad, like you're either sick or you just have like something you feel like something looming over you you literally clean yourself with an egg you rub the egg all over your body and then i don't know i'd never practiced this but like i think you either crack it into a glass a glass of water or like you do something with the egg after you clean yourself but basically you can see like visibly on the egg like the dirtiness of it oh, wow. and that like supposedly you like slightly like cleaned off the bad aura from you and now it's like released yeah i've heard people say that like they would crack the egg and it would be like black yes i've heard that too yes but like i don't know if you're supposed to crack the egg or if you're just supposed to like like what are you supposed to do with the egg i don't remember yeah i don't know just not eat it i assume but like (laughs) (laughs) don't Don't eat it don't scramble it (laughs) (laughs) you could give it to someone you don't really you don't like (laughs) would you like some scrambled eggs enemy (laughs) (laughs) it's green eggs and ham (laughs) but yeah like that yeah like things like that like that my family actually like i've seen them like practice and i'm just kind of like side eye hmm doesn't this go against what we were raised to believe (laughs) curious 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 i'm sure they've done other things too that i don't know about but yeah. Oh, well, growing up, like my my friends in Mexico would be like, "It hasn't rained in a while. Let's do the rain dance." And I'm like, "Hmm." Like I don't <laughs> think that's witchcraft. I think that's more so like a that's like an indigenous practice. Like yeah. it's an indigenous practice mm. in Mexico, or it'd be like the rain dance. I'm like, huh. but I feel like like through a Catholic lens that would be viewed as witchcraft, right? Because it's not you're not praying. Because yeah, I think like like folk medicine and like native practices and stuff are all like viewed as witchcraft well yeah Mm -hmm. because they were like no 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 you must believe in god well no yeah they were trying to change like everyone to follow the decent society which was do religious practices don't don't do what you traditionally do this is your new tradition yeah yeah you pray the rosary now (laughs) you pray this now Brujas very much mastered the body and the supernatural forces. And like I said, they were like subverted, like masculine control of women. So non Christian, feminine, and BIPOC, like witches were like very much the other. And they often used their own po- this position to like transgress the orders of sustaining colonial oppression. So, like I said, like they were just like, screw the caste system. Mm. I don't belong there. Like, <laughs> I'm doing my own thing. Yeah. So they did offer their services to help others, like, challenge, like, the masculine domination in their own domestic lives. They lay the foundations for later forms of organized spiritual resistance resistance um, to, like, the patriarchy. So that's where I, like, brought in how women actually hired out brujas to do they're bidding because it's like it's kind of like it's not me doing it it's a, it's, a, it's this person doing it but then they would feel guilty about it they would snitch on themselves to the holy office <laughs> well, that was the same in, in i think it was in the greek episode mm-hmm. yeah but they would hire other they would like hire witches to do like spells for them yeah and they'd be like well it's not me she did it yeah <laughs> it was probably as well like one of the few like quote-unquote like business deals between women it's a woman who's providing a service. Right. And it's probably one of the few jobs that, like, she could have of her own. So it's, like, women going to other women, and then and then she's like, oh, shit, I was doing this in secret, um, and I'm going to get in trouble with the church now. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, interesting that they're outside the caste system, and it's another way I would assume that in those days a woman was only as powerful as her closest male relative, whether that was her husband or, like her father like if she came from a good family so if you have a woman who's probably like making her own money or having she has her own like clients and people that she provides these services to that's another way that she's outside of it she's not relying on a man to like provide for her yeah she's like i'll buy my own car yeah (laughs) yeah or mule or whatever (laughs) the mule 
I can buy my own mule. I don't need your money. <laughs> yeah, like, brujería overall, like, in Mexico and, in, like, Latin American countries is very much, like, a, a form of, like, resistance. And that is very much how brujas were able to, like, resist. They didn't conform to, like, this caste system. They didn't need anything from anybody. They just needed, like, to be able to continue to practice their own beliefs and they did so like it was clearly seen as like something that the religious peoples like respected and i guess kind of needed in a way because they were very much still open to using it secretly like using the the practices very secretly yeah to the point of snitching on themselves but (laughs) i just can't get over that i was like why would they tell what like it was just it was just weird like to read that they were like they felt so gu- but like the catholic guilt behind mm-hmm. it that they were just very much like oh i, I did a bad thing and maybe like <laughs> it made them look like um, more pious if they confessed to something and like maybe it was something like you're minor, right yes right and like they were able to go oh like yeah like i hold my hands up i did this bad thing whereas they could have been do- doing something way worse that they weren't actually telling anybody about but they're just like i am an open book right i tell everybody all of my bad deeds because i'm such a good catholic you know right that reminds me of people who will kill like eight people and then they go to jail and then they're like no like i found god and god has forgiven me and stuff it's like yeah sure right like, gypsy rose mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> gypsy rose blanchard i didn't kill my mom there i you. mean allegedly she was in some extreme circumstances yeah. with her mom no i understand that but like she I guess, like, a part of her parole is that she needs to, like, admit, like, guilt to, like, the situation. But mm-hmm. she's saying on the internet, she's been very much like, that. W- like, I didn't have anything to do with the actual, like, act. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no. Brujeria in Latin American countries is still very much practiced to this day. Like, you see, like, there's, like, like markets uh, still, um, like, dedicated to these, uh, to encouraging brujeria. Um, and like the practices of it, it's very spiritual and it's very much like we're taking ownership of one's like body and one's practices and people are very much reconnecting with that part of themselves that was erased through colonialism. Like, like a lot of people are finding out that they're indigenous, like, or like, especially like, uh, Latin American people, like from, like for me, for instance, like we find out that we are... Well, I didn't do the the DNA test, but my brother <laughs> did. And he's like the majority mestizo, which is um, indigenous and Spanish. Like it's, he was almost it's, exactly. He was like fifty one percent like native, like to Mexico. Wow. And then like forty nine percent Spanish. That's wow. Yeah. It was almost like exactly half and half. And it's like like we. I feel like we always knew that, but like we didn't because of just how Catholic we grew up. And it was like for me, like I, I very much always see like, oh, indigenous people these days practice and still uphold their own traditions and beliefs, which is very counter what like the Spanish Inquisition tried to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they tried to erase these peoples and have them all under one umbrella, but like they're still alive to this day they're smaller communities i believe but like people finding out more about their indigenous ancestry is very much encouraging them to reconnect with that part of themselves and on a part of themselves is brujeria and which it's like you're they're reclaiming that as well brujeria doesn't necessarily have to be condemned and evil like the inquisition was implying that it was it's also it has to do with limpias like limpias like how my tia did where she was, it was like good magic. Like it's not all black magic. It can be good magic. Like I like, feel like yeah. most of it's not bad. Right, magic. Mm. exactly. But it's just that because it didn't fall under Catholic, um, the Catholic practices, it was condemned. Right, and it was seen as something bad to the point where people were like putting hits on, like spiritual hits on people. Like uh, it's how you can kind of see it because that's how they use brujeria as kind of like a weapon. Right. And, like, to get back at, like, lovers and people that they didn't like. But, but yeah, to this day, like, they, people are very much reclaiming their, their, their inner brujas. I have seen many, many brujas in Chicago, like, practicing. And they, their, the majority of their practices 
our limpias, our like cleansing of the spirit in ways that aren't necessarily. It's like a lot of helpful things. Right. They're good things. It's like if you're having like a difficult time mentally, you might need like a cleanse and then you might need to light this candle and let it burn and like to like banish your worries stuff like that like i don't think it's Mm -hmm. well this one woman um who is pretty active in chicago she does like limpias like with like flowers like roses like she primarily uses like roses to like to like cleanse and i'm just like that's really nice like how is that how was that seen as something so vilified back then and it's because it didn't conform to a decent society it wasn't right it didn't go along with like what they believed right and so, yeah, like, to this day, people are very much reclaiming that. They're openly seeking brujería. I guess it's curanderismo. I don't, like, that's a spiritual healing as well. Kind of like, it was put into the same umbrella in Spanish colonial days where it was, um, if you were doing anything that was, like, a spiritual practice that was indigenous and in its roots, then it was condemned and it was put under the same the same name of sin uh Mm -hmm. (laughs) i feel like a lot of people and not even necessarily in like latin american culture just like a lot of people are feeling sort of compelled to rediscover yeah like called back to their roots yeah and to try to discover stuff that might have been lost under oppression yeah Mm -hmm. colonialism yeah Yeah. and i guess there are more resources too like you can whereas like say like maybe 20 25 years ago you would have to like go and try and research like in the library or something like people now can like just check things out on the internet and connect with other people with the same interests and like learn from people from their exact same culture like even just like through youtube or anything like that just you know understanding the basics of things and then exploring it that way and seeing if it's something that speaks to them which is really cool Right. It's cool that there's, like, resources available now. Like, I don't imagine there's resources available in Spanish colonial times mm. at all where people could, like, even, like, like DIY. Yeah. Like, Especially when it was so spells. outlawed, right? <laughs> when, like, it could have, it right. could, get, could get you in trouble. So it was all secret. So it's cool that the knowledge is being preserved Yeah, and, like, they tried well. to erase it. Mm-hmm. These things weren't even documented. Like, these were things that were passed on from women to women. And from, like, it was generational. It was very much a generational practice. And then it was, they attempted to wipe it out. And it's really cool that this day and age people are trying to reclaim that. Because they acknowledge that this was something that was very misogynistic in, in, its, in its roots. And... Well, yeah, men didn't, like, men, especially within the church, didn't want powerful women. No, and that, because men were in power. And, like, brujas were, like kind of transcended that yeah (laughs) so they were very much trying to condemn them in any way that they could yeah and it was by getting rid of spiritual leaders and just encouraging people to go to the holy office if they felt a little guilty and like if you if you have something like say like a minor ailment that's wrong with you sure you can go to the priest and you can get like a blessing put on you but like i think people would connect a lot more to somebody who's literally going to give you like a physical like herb remedy or something that they're you're able to actually physically use and will probably now if we looked into it has like some scientific basis like it maybe it's a it's really good for like killing pain or for like lowering your lowering blood pressure or whatever it is you know rather than just going and getting blessed by a priest like they're going to women who have practical solutions and it's mm-hmm. you know it's just part of their culture you know but no like in re- regards to like Osolotl like he he was trying to do like the practices that were spiritual and had roots in you know the curanderismo mm-hmm. which is the heal spiritual healing and they said no like you can't do that and we're going to condemn you for it yeah when it was probably not doing any harm, it was probably actually helping people. It was giving people hope. Yeah, as opposed to like with the with the nuns and the Spanish woman was were doing. It was just kind of like prayers, sorrow, sorrows, prayers. Yeah, like 
just stand around yeah, being sad it's about like, it. Right. It's like not material. Like it doesn't, not, not that it was material, but it like had, it was just very spiritual based and it wasn't as like, they don't even go into detail as to what Ocelotl was doing, like what kind of treatment he was providing. But if it was indigenous in practice, it it was like something either like physical that they were mm-hmm. doing. You know what I mean? Where it yeah. was like probably like. He probably had a whole ritual like, and yeah. remedies. Yeah. Exactly. I go to Mexico, like I said, every, almost every year, and they even have like stores dedicated to like brujeria, and like it's kind of taboo to go into them to this day if you're from like a small town. Like you get, I don't know. I feel like it's still taboo because if I walk into one, I feel weird about it, and that's internalized. Yeah. Like it's just because of how. Like how I was raised, like a good little Catholic girl. Like yeah, good, even like, though like and then you wouldn't judge anybody else side. for doing it, but like you feel like somebody will talk no. about it if they see you. Exactly, and I don't care. I'm just like, do what you want. Like, <laughs> like live. Like, it's, I think it's so cool that people are reclaiming that part of themselves that they want, or even rediscover or discovering it. Like that, you know, I like brujeria. Like, gives them a sense of empowerment mm-hmm. and control over like a very patriarchal society because it is still very patriarchal. In Mexico, there are herbalist shops, like things of that nature where you can like, it's very interesting because you can like seek remedies to like certain ailments and it's like, oh, well, this kind of root, it's like curanderismo though at that point, like where it's healing, Mm -hmm. herbal healing. Um, But like I said, I feel like that was very much in the same realm of brujeria back in colonial Spain. And yeah. now, but now, like openly, we actually saw that a lot in our like uh, in our African episode. So they had a scenario where someone would they would go to a folk healer, and folk healing wasn't exactly seen as witchcraft. But as part of that, they would ask the folk healer to identify the person who had put the curse on them. So then the folk healer would have to basically like pick somebody and have this person hunted for being a witch. Just like, because otherwise, if you said you didn't know, then you weren't like, it meant that like you didn't like know your stuff or, you know, you were a fraud. It came all like together. Like that's how they all got intertwined. So that if you practice folk healing, you knew about witchcraft and you were probably involved in witchcraft. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because it's unnatural. It's supernatural. I actually know Mm -hmm. of somebody this day and age who like thought that they were convinced. I'm not going to name names because I don't want to get in trouble. But they were convinced that somebody was messing with their medications because one day they came into their house and it was frozen. All of a sudden... Their medication was frozen. Whoa. And then they went to Mexico and they saw a curandera and that they told them that somebody has put a hex on you or something of some sort. And then I was I was kind of like, hmm, because this person supposedly is a devout Catholic. And I was just very like, hmm, <laughs> like, <laughs> are we not supposed to be doing these things? Don't you not believe in this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Like, I understand. Like, I was just like, if you believe that strongly, then I don't know. Like, do what practices you need to like feel cleansed and all all that stuff and all that. But like, I don't understand like how people go around preaching Catholic, like that they're so like devoutly Catholic, and then they seek things that are condemned. Yeah, literally in the mm-hmm. Inquisition. It's it's a, it feels like it's conflicting. They're trying to rediscover themselves too, and they don't know it. Yeah, <laughs> they feel the pull. Yeah, they the just pull. don't know it. Something I saw that I thought was really beautiful. And I feel like it sounds shitty because I know like like you're Catholic and your family's Catholic. But there was a video I saw where it was like a like a tribal like Aztec dance. And they were doing it on the steps of a Catholic church. And like it said, like, said something about, I think I still have it. It said something about like stomping out, stomping on the the colonialism and stuff like that. And I was just like, wow, that's pretty crazy just to think that that's what it was before. And then this church came and like fell on top of it and was like, smash all your dreams. Right. Do you remember if it was, I've talked about this scenario here where a lot of the religious sites, later on religious sites, when they trace them back, they were originally huge sites of like Celtic worship. Oh, yeah. Like, was that why they were dancing there? Mm, I don't think so. I think it's just because like this became, like previously these lands were not, did not have these churches on them. Like they were indigenous lands. Mm-hmm. So I think that it was just the yeah. fact that they were on, they're on this lands and that they represent the presence, such yeah. like an op- 
oppressive community like something that like just caused so much harm to indigenous peoples and like even to this day Mm -hmm. like people can say oh like oh yeah that saved me but like i don't know like i think in the end like it did change so much for people to the point where people lost their their practices people very much lost their indigenous practices like to this day i can't tell you what indigenous practices my family way back when upheld i know for a fact we were Mm. colonized very harshly and especially in the the town we're from like i can't tell you anything about my indigenous family like my indigenous roots yeah well and it's proof in your like the ancestry dna thing because it was like oh you're like half native to this land and you're half colonizer which is like oh it's, so it's like the proof it's hard it's like the proof that. of something really bad happening yeah yeah and it's like it's so it's such like a conflicting mm-hmm. feeling to know that you're like that's your dna because you know like okay like my family is colonizer like it's and i and that mm-hmm. has a very negative connotation i don't know it's very internalized for me that it's very negative because i've seen it religion is a very difficult topic <laughs> <laughs> for <Yeah>. me <laughs> and in general because it just feels like it's oppression um but it's all i've ever all i had mm. ever known right you were raised on it and it's like part of your childhood and who you are and it's and i like the practices in which my family comes together like christmas as a kid was always super awesome i don't know if you had like same experience where you would all come together during christmas mm-hmm. and like you would do prayers yeah. and stuff but like the point is that you were all together and i think that's what i enjoy the most is like yeah. the togetherness of it not necessarily like the 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 things that are preached where it's very because it's still patriarchal to this day um irish like death rituals are like they're probably my favorite thing about our culture like the way that we we bury our dead and the way that we we have like two three day long wakes and you know everybody everybody in the entire town like i would I come from a really small town and when my grandfather died when I was a child, I I think we had to add an extra day onto his wake because so many people were coming. Oh, wow. And it was just like, it was just like probably one of the biggest funerals I've ever been to. Yeah. And I've been to other like funerals, which maybe aren't centered around the church and it just doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel like that that sense of community is there. And it just feels like there's a disconnect. Mm-hmm. It just shows like that, yeah, you get that conflicting feeling where you're like, I don't agree with so much of this, but there's so much good in it as well. And I appreciate how much comfort it can give people right. too. So it's it's weird when you've grown up. Right. Like, yeah. And it's like the church is like the the backbone. It's sort of like the staple for all the rituals and stuff for the funeral. Or or Christmas or Easter mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Right. It was like there were all the pagan holidays that the church was like, we're just going to take this and make it ours. So we kind of like lost mm-hmm. the ways that we used to celebrate. It's just changed into something else. It's intense. Yeah. It's a recurring theme on this podcast. Yeah. It's always the church comes up, they destroy stuff, men destroy stuff. <laughs> And then the brujas prevail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In secret. <laughs> I did have a story of like when I was little, like something that we were always told um, about brujas. And it had to do with uh, a palm tree that we have in our house in Mexico. And my tia, my aunt, would like claim that there is a owl living in there. And... Sometimes in the middle of the night, it would fly, it would come back from where it was coming, but it was in the form of a witch. So it was a witch when it left the palm tree and when it came back, it turned back into an owl (laughs) and they didn't really ever have anything like, like, like any story saying like what they did when they were out. They always, my dad always just said like, yeah, it would turn into, like, that was a scary thing is that this creature transformed into a witch and then it transformed back into a creature when it was in the palm tree and that's very (laughs) similar to a story that i read um in hidalgo that happened in hidalgo mexico they have a sounds like they have a lot of like lore about brujas yeah and it's very witch heavy yeah and it's like a very it's very not okay to say bruja on Fridays, like in specific. <laughs> and oh. people, I guess, still put salt on their rooftops and they put 
scissors in the shape of a cross below their beds. And the whole thought behind that is that they need to protect their newborns because I guess like the brujas are thought to shift into turkeys. Like, and, and they spend the nighttime Whoa. looking for newborns to suck blood from. And so the belief was that the vampire witch, turkeys, vampire turkeys, <laughs> the belief was that like the witch's tongues would actually turn into spider webs at night and the web reaches into the newer baby's crib to suck their blood. So that's how they would suck their blood. Wow. And <laughs> so Whoa. people would actually use the scissors, the ones in the form of a cross. To, like, cut the spider webs before before putting their baby down at night. And that in the morning, you would see just human tongues all over the place. Because that's (gasps) what the spider webs converted back to. Ew! (laughs) What? (laughs) What? Right? (laughs) Um, I love this story. It's It's so creepy, though. (laughs) It's creepy. Um, And then in regards to, like... Like the turkeys, <laughs> brujas were said to remove their legs, transform into the wajolotes. They're called wajolotes, which is turkey. And they have the ability to become a flying fireball. Like, that's the thought. Like, the, they saw f- that fireballs were, like, seen and that they're, like, super scary. I don't know. Where they. That's interesting to me. But it was, like, a fireball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then... um. They're like, oh no, a fireball's coming like, through the window. A fireball. <laughs> and if they return to their house and can't find their legs, because they would take their legs off, if they can't find them, then their death is coming. Like, <laughs> then they're going to die. Oh my God. I don't get, like, Whoa. I'm just like, okay, so how are they walking around? Like, I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. a very interesting story. This is very much lore. Um, but <laughs> It's also but, so specific that they can transform their whole body into a fireball, fireball. except their legs. And I was just like, like, I was trying to see, like, why a fireball? Like, <laughs> like that's so interesting. I'm like, why a fireball? Yeah. Are they going around, like, wreaking havoc? Yeah. On, like... Yeah, that's not really inconspicuous. Like, are they just kind of like, I'm fast. <laughs> yeah. I'm going here. Are you there? He's there? <laughs> Do you have any questions, Neve? I guess the only thing I would ask is, like, is there anything that, like, if you had something wrong that you would do? Any, like, practices that you have adopted into your life that, like, maybe you just subconsciously you're like, this is something that I do and I don't even think of it as, like, like witchcraft or anything like that? Hmm. I- <laughs> would you do, like, a New Year's Eve ritual? Oh, you eat the 12 grapes? Or, oh, you eat... I think it's a... T- See, I don't do the grapes one because I wouldn't know it. But you um put in your suitcase, like, places that you want to travel oh. that year. And then you, like, run around either your basement or you run back and forth from, like, a street. And that, like, supposedly will help grant you that wish for that year. Oh, travel plans. And it's pretty funny because I did it the year before the pandemic started to, like, chill out. That year, we celebrated, like, New Year's by ourselves, I think. And um, I did that because we had our honeymoon that was planned that was canceled because of COVID. Like, a bunch of stuff was canceled. And I was like, I want to go to Amsterdam because that's where we're going to have our honeymoon. And I want to go to Mexico. And I want to go travel, like, somewhere within the U.S. And all three of those things happened that year because, you know. The pandemic chilled out and it was all because of me. Like, yeah. <laughs> she fixed it. It's because, it's because she I eased travel to restrictions. Travel. Yeah. Yes, I <laughs> eased the travel restriction. Um, so powerful. But no, I guess, I don't know if that's really witchcraft. I think that's more, I don't know. What is that? I feel like vapor rub is witchcraft. Oh my God. I don't, I don't adhere to vapor rub, vaporu. We call it vaporu and it's like the cure all in Hispanic. And Latin, I guess in Latin American culture, I don't know about Hispanic, um, but it's the cure all. Like you put it, you're feeling like you have a headache or something, put vaporu on. People are not supposed to vapor up. You're not supposed to put in your nostrils. My husband puts it in his nostrils because he says it what clears it. He's crazy. It <laughs> clears it up quicker. And I'm like, because it's burning your insides, my dude. <laughs> do you put it like, on the bottom of your, your mom feet? do that to you guys? Yeah, I thought your brother was saying that your mom would put it on like a Q-tip and then just like quickly. And that's like... why I hate vapor rub. Oh like, wow! Blah. Yeah, 
Um, when She's my like, daughter get it in there, <laughs> my daughter likes to get sick, so we got her baby vapor rub, which is very nice. Like it's way better than the medicated stuff. Cause we're, is it not as strong? No, like it doesn't hurt. But I don't put it in her nostrils. Like <laughs> <laughs> I put it on the bottoms of her feet, on her chest. Yeah. Like we do the bottoms um, of the feet here too. Yeah. It's like if you feel yourself getting sick, you put a bottom of your, bottom of your feet, and then you put socks on, and you go to bed. Yeah, um, I have heard yeah. that um, indigenous people use. I don't know if it's indigenous people. TikTok taught me this because I was so <laughs> desperate. My daughter was sick for the first time last year, and then she had like an awful fever, and I was just very desperate to see how I could help her because it wasn't nothing was working. So I looked it up, and it said like red onions. On her sock, in her socks, on the soles of her feet, and supposedly that would help, like detox it. It didn't, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I did try. Um, my mother in law, I think she's a little witchy, but she, I don't think she would adhere to witchiness. Her salsa is very witchy. <laughs> <laughs> she's supposed to. She makes salsa that will like blow your sinuses out of your face she's an angry <laughs> nice. woman <laughs> that's the thing the thing is that if your salsa is super spicy you were mad when you were making it oh. um so i was like she's a mad lady <laughs> and, <laughs> and i can't do spicy anywho when we were sick with covid she brought us a bunch of the ingredients to make a tea and it was like would it, I didn't make it because I don't want I don't want to have it. Like it was the weirdest like ingredients. It was like you had to blend together garlic, onion. Um, it's basically I don't know. It was like some ingredients that I just didn't want to like consume like that. Yeah, those don't sound so, like nice tea ingredients. You don't like drinking your garlic. <laughs> I love garlic. But my God, no. And then she's like, but she actually was like one of my friends said that this was like something that helped cure her COVID, and that's such like a witchy thing mm-hmm. to me because yeah. I'm just like herbal. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> but me myself, I don't know. I don't really know if I subscribe to anything witchy, but I am superstitious. If I spill salt, I got to throw it over my left shoulder. I get very, <laughs> I get very paranoid about that. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the thing is with that, but I just know that I get freaked out. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> 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 bad luck. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe stuff that's internalized that I do. Yeah. I guess you're only going to get older and we all know that we get witchier as we get older. So. Hell yeah. We're, we're all going to adopt My mom's a witch. Things. She's a plant witch. <laughs> oh yeah. Her, their mom has like plants everywhere she speaks to the wow plants. she does <laughs> scary <laughs> she can like make them go from dead back to life she's like poof yeah she's like it's okay i'll do it it's like oh okay and then it's like a week later it's like green again you're like what the hell <laughs> that's incredible mm-hmm. like i yeah. i would be a disaster she has two it's green so thumbs <laughs> all of her fingers mm-hmm. are green <laughs> it's because she has empty nester syndrome so she's just like these are my babies now <laughs> she has children in her house so <laughs> Anyway. Not, not, ba- not baby children. Not baby children. They're her ba- She told me she's like these are my babies. She told me before that her plants are her babies. Anyways, and then your dad gets mad about grandpa once. <laughs> Anywho, my dad's a witch. Your dad's a witch. <laughs> Sorcerer. She's just yeah. accusing people now. Yeah. Are you the Catholic Church? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me go to the holy office. I'm snitching myself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, thanks, Melina. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank thanks, you Melina. for loving me. It's a lot of good stuff that you gave us. Thanks. I hope I did. Yeah, oh. that was no, great. It's really great. Thank you. Do you want to plug yeah. your stuff? Melina does really awesome beadwork. Yeah, please plug it, and I can put it in our episode description too. I have a small business called Castillo. I have a small business <laughs> 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 called Castillo <laughs> and Co. Jewelry. And I make beadwork very much inspired by my Mexican culture and things that make me happy. And that's my journey to healing. <laughs> <laughs> She's a beautiful. Bruja. Thank you. Oh, I'm a bruja. I was going to say, <laughs> that could be like, yeah, that could be one of your um, your social Am media I handles. A bruja? Am I? Is it me? It is. <laughs> is it me? Am I the bruja? <laughs> She's making magical jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, Melina makes wonderful jewelry and when we post the episode and stuff, we can tag her. 
So we everybody can, can check her out. Instagram. And in our show notes, episode yeah. description. I never know what to call it. She'll be everywhere. <laughs> thanks, All right. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'm <laughs> Emily. I'm Nave. Fuck yeah, folklore. Fuck yeah, folklore. Uh, Which is... No, you're supposed to say fuck yeah, folklore. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah, folklore. I was like, am I? <laughs> Melina's like, witches unite. <laughs> yeah, literally, I was like, witches ho. <laughs> Give me a W. No. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Fuck yeah, folklore. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> what you said. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Am I a bruja? Am I? Is it me? <laughs> <laughs>